What is going on guys, it's Modern Warfare here and welcome back to another Apparition Net Studio video. So in this video I'm going to go over a few changes we've made in the new update 1.1.5 which we released a couple of days ago now. This update isn't really a big update, it's just got a few minor changes that I want to go over along with, um, so I'm not just going to do that in this video, I'm also going to go over a couple of things that um, people have mentioned on the forums, a few, uh, just kind of avoid some confusion or try and clear up some some uh, stuff because, for example, um, there are certain features inside Apparition Net Studio that a lot of people don't know exist, um, like you know the client gamer tag changer. A lot of people have come to me saying, "Why does Apparition Net Studio not have a gamer tag changer um, or or a client gamer tag changer?" Um, which it does actually have. It's not quite you know that stuff isn't completely obvious. Um, at first glance that it has that so that's why I kind of want to go over it. I did go over it in my Call of Duty video on Apparition Net Studio but I'm going to go over that again because we have made a little change as well to the gamertag changers. So there's that um, and then also some other stuff um, that people have been met, have mentioned so uh, that I just want to kind of clear up. It's just to clear up some confusion. So first things first, a um, couple of changes in the new update 1.1.5 so the first thing is that we can now use the key vault checker without having to be connected to your console. So that was kind of a you know a, that was kind of a mistake on our part um, that you can't use the key vault checker if you're not if you don't have your console on and connected. Obviously, we use CPU key authentication on the on the tool, so you can't open uh, a mod tool unless you're connected to your console, uh, which makes sense. But of course, for uh, the key vault checker that doesn't really make sense because obviously you might not have your console on and you just want to check a key vault that's on your desktop on your computer you don't need your console on for that so um, we've taken out that check on the key vault checker so now you can open it without having to have your console connected so that's one little change the other thing I wanted to go over is I've changed how you add uh, quick launches so if you don't know what the quick launcher is, basically you can run games just by clicking uh, whatever game you want. So if I want Black Ops 2, I click it, it launches Black Ops 2 without having to manually navigate through all the different folders to find uh, the XEX file and manually launch it that way. So the normal way to add quick launches is through the file manager. That's the normal way of doing it, the easiest way of doing it. You just find the game that you want to um, add, uh, add to quick launch. So Modern Warfare 3 here, for example, you find the XEX and you click Add to Quick Launch and that enters the launch path automatically for you and then you just have to enter the name of the game and click Add Launch. Um, and then of course you can also right click and Add to Quick Launch as well, which does the same thing. Whereas we also added an option to add a new Quick Launch item from the Quick Launcher and this is where some confusion was happening because I saw a couple of people made some videos showing Apparition Net Studio and they tried to add a quick launch but they tried to do it through uh, this quick launcher, this option in here. So it used to just open up this little box without entering a path so you'd have to enter the path manually uh, so people were entering the wrong paths in here and getting it all mixed up and then their quick launcher wasn't working. So we've just basically changed that now. So if you click add new quick launch from the quick launcher itself, it will just give you a message saying that you have to add it through the file manager using the .xex file. So you find the game's .xex file and you click add to quick launch and then it will just automatically open the file manager for you so that you can go ahead and do that and just find your .xex file and add it to quick launch through the file manager like you're supposed to do and then your quick launcher will work. So the next thing is just to kind of go over a couple of things that were confusing a few people. So the first thing was, why does Apparition Net Studio not have a gamer tag changer? It has both, it has both um, client gamer tag changers and um, it has pre-game gamer tag changer. Now the pre-game gamer tag changer works in all CODs and Halo as well. And that is in here, so the edit identity information. So yes, this is an XUID spoofer. So if you set it to a real person's gamer tag and do a full spoof that will spoof the whole XUID to somebody else but if you just want to use it as a gamer tag changer then you can just change the gamer tag to whatever you want and then just select the spoof gamer tag option and that is a pre-game gamer tag changer so that way you can set it to different colors the, the name will change in pre-game to whatever you select and you can also choose 
colors in here as well, which will open up this, and then you can select, you know, green, and it will enter the symbol for you um, in order to spoof your gamer tag to whatever you want. So that is your pre-game gamer tag changer, and that's in every single COD, so and Halo as well. So yes, we do have a pre-game gamer tag changer for people who thought that we didn't have that. Another thing we have is the client gamer tag changer. Now I do understand why some people may not have found this because it's not super obvious, I suppose. Um, but obviously, you, when you're host of a game, you can refresh clients, and that grabs everybody in your game. But then there is a also a client gamer tag changer, which a lot of people thought we didn't have. Uh, we do have a client gamer tag changer. So what you do is you just double click the client that you want to change their gamer tag to, uh, something different. So you select edit client gamer tag, and then you can edit their gamer tag. So if I change this to modded warfare, and then set current client gamer tag, you can see it changes there. If I open this up, press back, you'll be able to see that my name has changed there as well. So that is one thing. Um, so for example, if I want to, uh, I'll give myself God mode here. Now if I want to change it to different colors as well, so obviously I can set it to you know something like green. And then if I do that, that'll just change it to green, as you can see there. But then there's also extra options like multicolor. So if I set animated multicolor, now animated multicolor is basically rainbow. There's another name for it, I guess. So you'll see it changes to different colors. It just cycles through all the different colors like that. So you can do that. And then you can also change it to non-animated multicolor, just multicolored name here. And what that'll do is it'll set every character or every second character to a different color. So you can see it's every second character. If it's a long gamer tag, it will set every second character to a multi to a different color. And if it's a short gamer tag, it will set each individual character to a different color. So we do have quite a lot of different gamer tag options, as you can see there. Now, as for something we've added in 1.1.5, is we've added an all client option. So if you right click on the clients box, you've got this all client option. So before because it's client, because these are client mods, obviously you've got your off host mods which work when you're not the host, you've got the host mods which work, which work when you're, uh, only work when you're the host. Same with global game variables, they only work when you're host. But then we've also got uh, the client modifications where you select, again, you need to be host, but you select the client and then you select a mod and it will enable that mod or disable that mod for the client that you select. So it will only work on whatever client you select. So the all client option allows it to work for everyone. So rather than having to say you want to put God mode on for every single person who's in your game, you don't have to manually select the first person and enable God mode and then the next person, the next person, the next person. You just right click, check all clients. So once that's checked and I say God mode, that turns God mode on for everybody in the game. So you don't have to manually select each client and enable the mod for each client. So that is something new we've added in 1.1.5 and it also affects the gamer tag changer as well. So if I uh, edit client gamer tag with all clients checked and I edit client gamer tag, if I change this to modded warfare and say I set multicolor, what that'll do is it will change everybody's name in the game to a different color. So it sets them all to the same name with a different color. Um, that is what the all client. That's what it'll do if you have all clients. So as you can see, the mods behave slightly differently. Like the gamer tag changer behaves differently when you have all clients checked. So that's a couple of things I wanted to um, just show. Another thing, we've also added an all client option to um, the custom commands for stuff like middle text and kill feed text. Uh, so you can basically send, you know, your middle text message to everyone in the game rather than just you know whoever is selected up here the same with kill feed text as well okay so the next thing i want to clear up before we finish the video here is what happens when the console gets switched off while the tool is connected so a lot of people saying like you know is there any way to stop it from freezing because um normally if your console turns off like if i turn my console off right now um and then turn it back on which could happen if the console freezes or crashes for whatever reason and you want to turn it back on and use the tool you have to switch it off uh, close the tool and open it again 
that's not strictly true. The problem is that when the console turns off, the tool still thinks you're connected. Well, it's XRPC and JRPC still think you're connected. So if you try and open a mod tool, um, when the console boots back up, because it needs to read information from the console, it's not going to be able to read the information because it thinks it's still connected on the old connection, whereas your console's rebooted, it's established a new connection, so it just won't work. And it's a problem with XRPC and JRPC. If I try and open a mod tool, you can see nothing's happening because it's trying to connect on the old connection. So it's not actually that much of an issue because what you can do is you can just open up the console hub you don't have to reboot the tool or anything you just have to cons open up the console hub and the, although it does show like it's connected that's because um, it's detected the console on XBDM but XRPC and JRPC are still not connected so none of this is going to work none of this is going to open but you don't need to reboot the application all you have to do is just right click and click the reconnect option and that will establish a new connection on XRPC and JRPC and then you'll be able to open the mod tools so there we go, there's the Black Ops 3 tool opening just fine, and that works no problem. So that is how you reconnect the software if, you re if your console crashes or reboots for whatever reason. You don't actually have to close the program and reopen it. And if you have a tool open at the time, say I had the Black Ops 2 tool open, um, and then my console rebooted for whatever reason, once it boots back up, I could either go into the console manager and do the same thing, right click, reconnect, or just click this connect option here and that will establish a, a new connection. As long as your IP hasn't changed on your console, then clicking this will establish a new connection as well. And then you'll be able to open the tools and nothing will freeze in the tool. So obviously, if you switch your console off and while the console is off, before it's even reconnected and you try and uh, run stuff, then what can happen is it will freeze sometimes. So the best thing to do is just to Wait till your console restarts before you click anything in the tool and then use one of those reconnect options to establish a new connection and then everything will work fine and you don't have to reboot the software. So anyway, that is just a few things I wanted to point out about uh, stuff inside ApparitionNet that people have been asking us about as well as some changes that we've made in the 1.1.5 update. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, comment if you have any questions, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Shuffling.